Hey there, it's Ben Hyde here at BCC Hardware, and today we're taking a look at the TP-Link RE650 range extender. So this is a product we've actually had here for quite a while, and in fact, it's been working so well that I forgot I was even using it. Um, it's, it's one of those things that you install, it works like it should, so you you never think about it. It just it improves your, your network, end of story. So what we're going to do today, we're just going to take a quick run through of this device. Uh, it is a range extender, but it does have other modes, such as an access point mode, where you can flip to that and then you can hook your wireless network up to this range extender and then there's an ethernet jack on it and what the network is then bridged to come out the ethernet jack. You could plug that ethernet jack into a switch and now suddenly you've got a wireless node that you can output to a bunch of wired connections if required. Now that it, you can select which band you want to use. If you're trying to get the most range out of it, go with a 2.4 gigahertz band that has the best range. Uh, if you're closer but you want great speed and you just can't run a wire to all those devices, take a look at the 5 gigahertz band that will help maximize your speed. That being said, let's jump through here and take a look. The, the quick setup um, is just going to show you quickly. Uh, it's going to detect stuff, automatically connect, and, and you can set it up through this web page, or you can use the Tether app, uh, which is, works for Android or iPhone, which is great. But what we actually did, the way we set it up, was it comes with basically a button to push to connect. So you push your WPS button on your router. If it's enabled, push the button on this. It flashes, connects on one uh, one frequency, one band, you push the WPS button again on your router, push it again on the RE650, it'll connect on your secondary band, inputting the passwords, done. So that's all that we've actually done on this, and it's just auto-detected and set it up, then we jump into this web page to show you guys today what's going on. So we'll start here, this is the status page, very basic, just showing what's going on. It is not, the, the RE650 is not a DHCP server, which we'll get to that in a bit, um, and these are our current uh, our current SSIDs on both the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz, which were pulled through WPS from our router. So over here to wireless, we're going to go to this connect the network. You actually connect to the host network. You can do this manually if you've got multiple wireless networks around and you don't have WPS set up. You can actually do it here. Uh, simple as putting in the SSID. You can scan for SSIDs, um, put in the password, hit save, done. On the extended network side of things, you can actually extend the network and, and use the same SSD or you can actually change it so that way you have multiple things so you know which network you're on, if you're on the extended one or not. However, the seamless way to do it is just by default, extend the network, same SSID, and you're good to go. Moving over here to the network settings now, this is where you can change to have the IP address assigned automatically to the RE650 uh, from TP-Link, or you can specify it yourself. Change the subnet mask uh, gateway. In, in, in a sense, you can actually put this to a different gateway. So if you wanted to route traffic through a specific thing, you actually could when it was on this for whatever networking reasons you have. Um, DHCP server, is, of course, is, is set to auto, but it is actually off. Um, we're getting the DHCP uh, pass through from our router to the client connected devices. As I mentioned before, you have the option with your with your mode there to choose what uh, what frequency you want pump to this and out the Ethernet port and you can choose 2.4 or 5 gigahertz and that's where you change it here is under the network settings. As we have over to advanced settings now, we take a look and we do have options to have a power schedule. You know, pretty much self-explanatory, but if you want to limit this this uh, extended network at certain times a day. Maybe you use it out in, in the shop uh, on your on your fabrication floor to, to get stuff out there, but you don't want people using that on the weekends. You know what? Schedule it, shut it off. You're good to go that way. Of course, to do that, you want to make sure your time settings are correct, which we'll get through in the system tools here in a bit. What TP-Link does offer you to do here is to maximize uh, or, or control the output of your wireless network. And by default, it is set on max. Most people that want a range extender want the maximum range. Uh, but if for some reason that's interfering, or maybe you just need it to go a little bit farther with a solid connection, but not blast it you know, as far as you can, you, you may want to scale this back. However, again, most people want a range extender to extend the range as best they can, hence why it defaults to max. 
on the access control side of things here now, this is where you can see that we actually currently just have four devices connected to this um, that are far enough away from the router. They automatically connect to the range extender. And here's where you have a cho chance to um, either blacklist them, whitelist them so that everything else gets blacklisted, or you have a chance, you know, a choice to sit here and add them to the to the blacklist and so on and so forth. So this is, I mean, very, very basic access control. I mean, it works. You flip it on, you're good to go. Nothing groundbreaking here, just, just a few devices connected. On to the system tool side of things now. This is where you can set your, your, uh, your time zone. Um, by default, when we set this up, it asked through the app uh, later on if I wanted to sync my time um, with my device, with my mobile device. I said, sure. It did that, and, and there you go. So you can enable daylight savings time or not. Super simple. Um, LED control, that's kind of nice because this thing has some pretty bright LED indicator lights on it. And so if this isn't a place where it doesn't matter, that's fine. You could leave it alone. But I guess I did come in here and change this because it is in uh, kind of kind of an obvious spot here that after, you know, after 9 o'clock at night, I don't necessarily need this, you know, bright blue lights, you know, beaming and illuminating the entire you know, the entire area there. So we turn that off, uh, the night mode, we enable that so the lights go off at specific times. Firmware upgrade is nothing groundbreaking. You can upgrade your firmware um, and you can do it automatically. And actually I can see here that uh, that I probably could use, no, my, my firmware looks like we're up to date. We're good on that. Hardware version is one, firmware is 101, 100%. And once we've made these changes, if we want to, to, to deploy them onto different devices, we can back them up or we can, you know, restore them if we do something horribly wrong and we can't remember where it was. You've got that as well. Admin account, you know, change your password, system log. Well, it's, it's basically a log file, which is all that you kind of need there. So um, as far as the device goes, the performance of it is actually really good. Setup is incredibly simple. Um, it requires no hardware at all except for the device itself. However, if you have uh, Android or iOS, you can install the Tether app to customize it better, or you can find out maybe on your router what the IP address is and come in here and you have access to this page as well where you can do even more tweaking. Once again, this is Ben Hyde from BCC Hardware, just giving you a walkthrough of the interface of the TP-Link RE650 range extender for all the review details, including speeds and specifications and more, please head over to bcchardware.com.